Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. I have a tri-fold shutter card for you today. I guess tri meaning three panels, shutters, opens, I'm not sure where the names come from. However, I was inspired, I've, you've probably seen these all over Pinterest and different blogs, but my friend, I'm going to move this out to give attention to this. My friend Debbie Mookie had sent me this one using the Peaceful Deer bundle and the beautiful Peaceful Prince that's free with a $50 order through celebration through the end of September 30th, 2021. She made this beautiful card and sent it to me and I was inspired to use our other celebration paper. It's called Beautifully Penned and it is also available with a $50 order. We had a beautiful we have a current beautiful paper in our annual catalog that is in color and it mimics these different patterns that are in this one that's all black and white. And I'm using the hand penned petals bundle. Comes with the hand penned petals stamp set and the penned flower dies. Penned flower dies. I was afraid I was gonna forget that. As you can see, it cuts off out a lot of these images in here. And it also has this cool die that just die cuts into cardstock. I did the white flowers with a black border around it. So I'm gonna sit that off to the side. And then I just simply did a little bit of stamping on the back. Look at that, feel better friend. Now, if you were down in the dumps or not feeling well, had surgery, wouldn't this be a beautiful card to display there? Just, oh gosh, the patterns in this beautifully penned DSP for celebration are beautiful. And I just kind of mixed and matched them here. And so whenever we get started there, as you can see, I just kind of mixed and matched a whole bunch of different patterns, flipping them around and seeing what I liked best. Um, but the, you know, the main part of this card is actually the fold, which is super simple to make because I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the dimensions of our card base. Now all the products I use, the colors I use, uh, the um, measurements <laughs> that I'm gonna make on this card were all over on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. Underneath the YouTube description, it says visit my blog here. Just press that link, it takes you right over to cindyleebdesigns.com. I have additional photos, little tips that I have there for you to see on my blog. However, underneath the YouTube description, I also, along with my links to my online store, I also have the measurements for you. So let's just start out here with the piece of paper we're going to be using. And I realized I have my trimmer over on another table and I have to go grab it. I'm not kidding you when I say every surface in my stamp room is covered with a project right now. And so I <laughs> was literally, had a trimmer on top of a trimmer on a table over there just trying to um, make space to measure out another fun card I'm making. So we're going to start with a 10 and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. And then we're going to bring out our trimmer. And I'm going to have a handy dandy little um, template. I'll probably take a photo of it because I'm not really techie to actually make you a nice um, geometrically designed on the on the computer, but this will be my picture here, and I'm just gonna follow these directions here. So, we're gonna take that five and a half by 10 and a half, but we're gonna take the five and a half inch side, we're gonna put it up towards the top of our trimmer. I love this um, raised portion here that just keeps it right in place for you. And what we're gonna do is take the left side on the left side of our groove, and we're going to go to one and a quarter. So, one and a quarter, we're gonna keep our finger under our clear guide because we're gonna be using our cutting blade and we're gonna make two cuts um, in the middle of the card. We're gonna start at one and three quarters. And of course, I was prepared and I've been using my little piece of white that I um, taped underneath my cutting, uh, my ruler, but it didn't go down to eight and three quarters because the last project didn't go that far. So um, we're gonna go from one and three quarters down to eight and three quarters. So we're gonna now put down our dark cutting blade on our trimmer and we're gonna go down to one, from one and three quarters down to eight and three quarters. Now I'm going to have to really look here to where eight, 
And this is super hard without that little piece of white there. So there we go down to eight and three quarters, right up from the nine. Now, you could actually measure it over and do the same thing on this side, but I find it super easy just to lift this up, turn your paper, and then put the other five and a half inch side up towards your top of your trimmer. And now you have your left side on the left side again and do the same exact thing, one and a quarter. And if you're really good and you kept your blade at the rate right in place at the eight and three quarters, you can just literally put your blade down and go up to one and three quarters. But sometimes your brain, it's hard to wrap your head around that. So I'm just gonna go to one and three quarters again. So remember, we're at the one and a quarter mark on the left side, but we're brought our cutting blade down to one and three quarters. One and three quarters down to eight and three quarters. And if you've done it correctly, your cut lines are gonna be in the same place. So it went from one and three quarters down to eight and three quarters. Now what we're gonna do is the scoring. So we're gonna take that 10 and a half inch side that was here, the 10 and a half inch side, put it up towards the top. We're going to put our cutting blade at the top of our trimmer. Sometimes just to remind myself not to do that, I'll put something on like, here's just a little post-it thing. That'll remind me if I go to touch that do not cut because now I'm gonna be scoring. So what we're gonna do is once we have that 10 and a half inch side up at the, the raised portion here, we're gonna take this left side and we're going to go to one and three quarters, because that's actually where we started when we did our cutting. And we are gonna score in between these two cut lines. So we're just gonna go from one and a quarter down to four and a quarter. And technically, you don't necessarily, if you, if you watch these little guides on your trimmer or whichever trimmer you have, you're just going in between the lines. Then you're going to go to three and a half, going to three and a half. And what I'm doing is I'm just following my little template I made. And you're, this is easy because all you have to do is make sure it's at three and a half and you're gonna score the whole way down, okay? Then we're going to go over to seven. Now I'm gonna pull my, my extended ruler out and I'm gonna go to seven and I'm gonna do a score the whole way through the, from top to bottom again. So I'm, the whole entire section. Now, what do you think the next one is? We're gonna score that last part right between the ends of the two cuts. So that's at eight and three quarters. So eight and three quarters. And I see I'm right there where I need to be. And we're gonna go from one and a quarter down to four and a quarter. And that was right between the lines. Now, technically, once you did the one and three quarters score in between the lines and then you go to three and a half and score the whole way through. You could have turned your paper and did the same thing on this side. Then you don't have to remember that one more. You can go to, again, one and three quarters in between and then go to three and a half again and then you've done the cutting. So there you go. Is that awesome or what? So instead of doing our folding now, it's gonna be easier to put on our paper. Now, I made myself another little cheat sheet here too. So you can get a lot of cards out of this paper because you're cutting it in smaller sections here. So let's just see if I cannot drop these pretty papers here. Okay. Now I just saw some ink on a... Okay. So the first two sections we're going to do are these outer sections. And since this was one and three quarters, of course, that's going to be one and a half wide by five and a quarter. Now, if you chose to put a border, you would have just been going down a quarter inch. So this is one and three quarters. This would have been one and a half, and then this would be one and a quarter. But because this paper really pops off the black, we can skip that border, which is fun enough to do. Now I am going to grab, I'm going to see if I have any Oh, I do, I have a Stampin' Sale. I knew I just um, made one go, uh, it was gone. And I thought, oh darn, I didn't get out a new one, but I had another one, yay. So what we're gonna do is just get a nice, um, and actually I like to turn my paper so I can get this edge here. Um, and we're gonna get a nice one eighth inch border around all four sides 
So there's that side. And now we're gonna do this other side. And like I said, you can mix and match these. Like if you wanted to, like I am gonna change mine up a little from the one I made, but you could, I mean, you don't wanna mix and match that way. That kind of looks a little psychedelic there, but like if you wanted to do stripes on both sides. So um, we're just gonna, you could do that. Now I'm gonna have adhesive all over me here. So I really liked having Get that glue off my fingers there. Okay, so a little nice little one eighth inch border the whole way around. And then I decided to put some white here. So I'm gonna take these two little guys and put them right here. So once again, these were one and a half by five and a quarter. These ones here are one and a half by one inch high. And once I said, don't worry about all the measurements, you can look on my blog to find them. And it's a little hard to see the score lines on this one. So I just kind of go with looking at this score line and this cut line. And then that helps me out. Woo, flying paper there. Okay. Little adhesive there. I am just fumbly fingers today. Jim just got me a kayak, and I went out on a day ago, the day I didn't babysit my little grand baby girl, and I went out on the kayak, and it was so fun. And then I was fiddling around with making a video today, and my neighbor had texted me and said, "You want to go out on the kayak again?" And I was like. Darn, I was making videos and playing around with the videos. So I might just go do that when I'm done. Uh, we're making a video. It's kind of fun. Something like I um, wanted to get out in the water, but I don't ever, um, I can't drive the pontoon boat or anything like that, but that's something simple I can do. So the next two sections here are two and three quarters high, two and three quarters by one and a half. And like I said, I'm just mixing and matching. That's the opposite side. I've got some fuzzies here today. That's just the opposite side of our polka dots. And all of these patterns are wonderfully displayed in the beautifully penned. So if you looked at that paper and thought, hmm, now a lot of people are really drawn to the blacks and whites because they they just go, you can mix and match them so nicely with colors and different things. But if you ha need to take a second look at it, this is definitely a really cute, cute um, paper. Very sophisticated. Okay, so then we need these two sections right here. And those ones are one inch high, just like these ones were, and it is three and a quarter wide. So I use this pretty one. This is the only pattern that's a little, kind of off to me in this paper is the little, but love, luckily I love that paper, that side so much so that it's great that I can just flip it over and have no sadness that I'm using a part. I mean, I think it's going to be great, but I think it's a little whimsical to go with the, all, all the other patterns in there, but then maybe that's why they did it. A little whimsy. Okay. There we go. So there, that's how super easy that was. Once we did the cutting, then you just fill it in. Think of all the little scraps you have and how you could mix and match scraps from different designer series packs. And so then we're just gonna put a nice background in the front. And I saved the striped one specifically for that purpose because I liked how it didn't um, compete with any of the, huh, I'm competing with this stamp and seal. <laughs> I liked how it did not um, compete with any of the other patterns because you're going to put that beautiful uh, design here on. Oh, that looks pretty like that. But, of course, we want to do this. Now, let's just get out our glue here for this one because we're going to. Now, you could have easily ran that through with some adhesive sheets, but I didn't think to do that. So, I'm just going to get more glue on myself and just put a couple little dabs here, but adhesive sheets work wonderfully. 
with dies like this. So we're just putting a little bit of glue here and there, and we're gonna then put that white stencily die. Whoop, move you up there. Uh, just grab the two leaves that go over here and just put it right on the outline of the black and get some dimensionals out. Just put them here and there and everywhere. As you can see, I have probably more scattered dimensionals, pieces like this <laughs> than anything. But look how this little guy will fit right in there. And a little piece in here. Ah, I think that's good. And then we're just going to pop these little guys off here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see it's like kind of connected to the other one. And we'll pull off these dimensionals. one more. You can use your take your pick tool or your paper piercer to get those little guys off there if you can find it on your desk. <laughs> so how did I put my, let's see the oriented, yeah I put my leaves down towards the bottom there. So there you go and then I'll we flip over and we can put our sentiment on the back here and like I said what I did for that, I'm gonna sit this aside a second and I want to get a little piece of scratch paper here. And I am going to, I must have been a little sloppy cutting my paper. So I'm going to get my black memento. You can see where, and I'm just gonna ink up the image. Okay, and then I'm going to just, there's the good side there. Just put a little bit of little, little flowers there in the bottom. And then I'm gonna use that sweet little sentiment, feel better friend. I really like the idea of, and we can put that like right, we'll put it up here, down here. You can write your message. Let's just tuck it in, I need to get an orientation here of where I'm at. I'm gonna tuck it right down here. There we go. And then we'll just slip this little guy. Oh, I was actually feeling like I was a pro with that. And we're going to stick that right, make sure we're, this is the front. Well, actually it could be either way, right? You have a, don't have a top and a bottom to this, but I like, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna put that right in the middle section here and that's where you'll write a sweet little message. I can see sending this to somebody, whether it's birthday or whatever you're sending it for, I can see them keeping this card out for a long time. Okay, so here we go is now we just have to do the folding. Now if you look at the way I did it, you're just going to fold back this first section. Okay, and you'll make sure that you use your bone folder to get a nice crease. Like I said, I, when I, you can definitely crease this before you put your designer paper on. It was just easier in the video for me to do it this way. Now we want this section in the middle to pop down, okay? Like this, okay? And make sure that it's not gonna interfere with your thing. And then, but this part is popping up, okay? And it just takes a little bit of time to make this paper obey you. But once you do and you play around with it, it works. And then this one folds up in the middle. And of course I didn't adhere my paper super, super well because I was doing the, the video here. So um, you'll see how it ends up folding down okay and a lot of times once you get that folded down and like I said you just play with it a little bit till it folds into place that fits into our medium sized a2 envelopes there you go look at that and see I just changed up the patterns a little bit I still kept with the white along the border but I switched up my 
these two here on here just to see because I, I kind of liked the flowers and flowers but then this one gave more of a um, focus to the flowers on the inside. So was that super easy to do or what? That's called a tri-fold shutter card and that's using the hand, beautifully penned, beautifully penned designer series paper that you can get free with a $50 purchase during celebration till September 30th. And then we used our dies that were in the penned flower dies. We used those two dies in there and we use the hand pen petal stamp set. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. You can also leave, leave me a comment on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. Feel free to call or text me at 724-323-2296. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.